Hi, this is Nick Talsma, Power Platform Technical Solution Ar Architect with Ludia Consulting. I wanted to discuss and demo some of the background functionality and future roadmap of a solution we're working with. Uh, Dan Fine from UORF on. Uh, UORF, which stands for Ukraine War Animals Relief Fund, has leveraged the Microsoft D365 platform to address the current situation going on in Ukraine due to the Russian invasion. And while volunteering in Ukraine, in Poland, UORF's founder, Dan Fine, saw uh, an immediate problem there. The humanitarian effort had incredible backing from organizations, government, and the military. You know, the Red Cross, World uh, Central Kitchen, and major governments were throwing resources at helping humans, which is great, including technology. Unfortunately, very little was being done to address the abandoned animals. Small nonprofits were attempting animal rescue, and lots of independent volunteers were showing up, dropping off supplies, and delivering food and medicine, but it was a very chaotic and disorganized effort. And on top of that, uh, governments changed their laws, making it easier for humans to immigrate, but impossible for animals. So to keep animals alive, the focus had to be inside Ukraine. Shelters were already struggling before the war, uh, and now they're drowning from a lack of food, medicine, supplies, and labor. Uh, so UORF decided to apply technology to the problem by connecting shelters with volunteer drivers and with warehouses that have the inventory um, and to sort of protect against uh, corruption. Drivers verify shelters with the amount of animals they have there too. Um, the solution expanded out to manage sterilizations, vaccinations, and a Ukrainian animal database that ties in with uh, animal ID as well. Uh, it helps with donor, media, partner, and volunteer management. And for some additional background, Microsoft announced a couple significant offers for organizations in the not-for-profit space. Uh, they give out free licenses uh, for nonprofit organizations that want to use Microsoft Dynamics 365. Um, they provided a no-cost uh highly customized add-on to Microsoft Dynamics 365 named Fundraising and Engagement, which provides a robust system to manage fundraising and gift processing functions across the organization, and the Power Platform is also available, so you can write no-cost solutions and a front-end website, which users can leverage. All right. This uh, video is going to be an introduction that briefly walks through the components of fundraising and volunteer management as well as the customizations for shelter support we've built through the web portal. And we can also discuss how the backbone of this application uh, can serve to manage sterilization and, and uh, vaccination clinics as well. So uh, the, uh, the main applications we're going to be looking at today here are the, the nonprofit hub app and the, the custom UORF app that we've put together as well. Uh, other areas we plan to look for at in the future are fundraising and field service, which could be useful for scheduling and managing sterilization and vaccination clinics, research scheduling and project service as well. Okay, so we'll start off with, uh, start out by looking at the nonprofit hub here. So like I mentioned, this is the nonprofit hub app here that we're looking at now. Uh, we'll see, uh, if you look down the left here, we've got lists of items like donors, households, accounts, organizations. These are also called tables in the system, different types of information. Um, and within those, these uh, lists of records here, we can see we've got all kinds of different things we can click on. I've opened up organizations here. You can see we've got a bunch of these that have been created in here or you know, different accounts. And if you open up a particular record, you can look down into that and see all kinds of different fields that you can use to enter information about it. If we've got a media outlet, for example, here we could add you know, a website, a phone, um, you know, indicate the type of relationship here, add an address, uh, all that kind of stuff. And same with the rest of these types of records. We've got individuals or, or contacts as they're re referred to here. Um, we've got different views that we can we can uh, look at that can either be personally customized uh, or system-wide here where we can sort of sort 
the different types of of contacts we in, we have in here, which again could be people of you know, really any type of relationship to the organization that we want to track here. Um, we've got donors in here that we can keep track of. If you open one of these up, you can go ahead and see, you know, email addresses, phone, birthday address. Uh, all that kind of stuff that you may want to track in order to keep in touch with uh, with donors. We've also got the ability here set up to be able to track emails directly from Outlook against this contact. So you see here um, when uh, you know a user from the system from the system here oh, gets an email here that's relevant to a particular one of these donors. For example, they can tag that that donor in there and the email will show up right here in the system so you can see these these email contacts that you've had and uh, as part of tracking the information about your donors in the system we've also got the ability to set up dashboards in here you can create your own dashboard we don't have a ton of these set up yet but you know you can have any kind of information that you want in there um, you could have you know visual charts you could have lists of data like you see down here um you, you know heat maps uh, and you know these are things that anyone in the system can can build without the help of their it department it could be um they like said high level piece of information or potentially even you know uh, you know an oper operational chart with lists that can effectively serve as a to-do list for you know your users in the system we've got the ability in here to track fundraising like we'll see here um, we've got a manual kind of import integration here with sites like gofundme that allow us to import uh, all you know all of the lists of donations in there so we can see all of the the different donations that came in in amounts and dates and who they're from as well as the ability to expand this out in the future to things like memberships and, and planned givings and again create uh, dashboards around those donations as well. So you see another app that we've got here is the uh, volunteer management app that comes with the the nonprofit accelerator and this one we'll see is primarily for tracking the the volunteer people that you're you're working with here so if we go in here we can see all these different uh types of of uh, volunteers which could be uh you know people that are are uh, veterinarians vet techs drivers warehouse workers shelters volunteers dog walkers animal rescuers all sorts of different types of of people that you might want to keep track of for uh, volunteer purposes here and you know if you open up here you know, we saw before we could see you know a lot of the basic details about the person that you might want to keep track of but we also have the ability to uh, track things like their their qualifications which you know as I said before this might be that they're a driver or could be that they're a you know a veterinarian uh, a uh, you know or just a dog walker this is a, a place where we can keep track of what these you know what services these different volunteers are able to provide so that you know they can be leveraged in communications or anything else that we may need to uh, contact them for and again we've got you know the ability to track emails that are relevant to any of these particular volunteers directly from Outlook and have them be stored in the system for, for reference as needed there. In addition to the, the apps you've seen so far that come with the Nonprofit Accelerator, uh, we also have a custom UORF app that we've created to, to track the pieces around the uh, you know, the shelters, warehouses, animals, um, supply requests, uh, as we as we alluded to before, and are going to be leveraged as well through the portal. So you can see we've got these tables in here with all the different relevant records being stored in here that we've imported from you know various sources on the ground that that give us the you know the details around the shelters warehouses animals um 
here. So you'll see you know, we can dive into uh, all the details around these shelters that we've imported here in both English and Ukrainian. Uh, uh, in addition to, like I said, some of the the warehouses uh, or animals that we, you know, that we've uh, received as well and uploaded into the system with along with their uh, microchip data here, um, and I'll dive into the uh, you know, these a little bit further on the portal here, which uh, which has allowed us to expose these entities to to users outside of the actual internal application here. So this is the portal interface I was discussing that's actually intended to be used by volunteers and relevant parties uh, over in Ukraine. So we've got here, you'll see on the site, we've got the list of animals, shelters, and warehouses. And I can dive into here to you know, show you a bit of what that looks like here. So we've got, you know, out here on the portal, I said we've got a searchable list of animals here. It's you know, sortable by different fields here. And then we can, again, drill down into any one of these records to see details about it. We can see you know, we've got all this sort of data that's imported from uh, microchip data and then also has uh, the ability to store actual pictures of the animal to help uh, either with the efforts around animal reunification with their owners or with adoption efforts for people who may want to uh, give a, a permanent home to some of these animals. We've additionally got uh, shelters exposed here. So if we go into you know one of these records, you can see that we've got both an English name that helps with the management of them for over here, but also the local name so that uh, users of the portal through Ukraine can identify these. So if we click down into one, you'll see we've got uh, all kinds of different information uh, about the shelter, including how to contact them, where they're at, and you know, website information, additional information to be able to be provided here, and the ability to post comments about the shelter itself. So you know, if we want to go in here we can you know post a comment here and we'll see it we'll see it show up down there so this can be used to help uh, with all sorts of different things as far as some of the driver verification that that we talked about you know drivers who have an authenticated account in the portal can you know, I go through and make a comment and say, hey, I showed up there and this is how many animals I saw there, you know, which you know, again may, may or may not match sort of what the, the shelter has claimed there. So we can help get some validation that way. It can also be used by the shelter right now to potentially post that they need particular supplies or by drivers to indicate that, you know, they've gone out to help assist with some or all of uh a particular uh, a particular need that's been expressed by the shelter there and we've also got some out-of-the-box capacity to apply ratings to a particular shelter again just to at a high level glance make it apparent which uh, shelters may have been flagged several times by people as potentially being something that's you know bogus and not not what it claims to be to prevent supplies from going places that they don't need to be uh, and help them to get to the places that genuinely do have the uh, the need for those you know, food, microchips, vaccines, whatever the case may be. And then we've also got the ability to track warehouses in the system. And these are the places that actually have the supplies so that when a driver that's maybe planning to head out to assist a particular shelter wants to bring them supplies, they can know where to find those. They can see um, what warehouses are out there along with you know address information for them. Now one of the other features that the the portal here gives us uh, is the ability to incorporate language functionality. So I mean it's great that we've got this built out here in 
in English for our you know purposes here of you know designing it and showing it you know any potential audiences or sponsors over here but uh, you know to be truly useful to the target audience we needed to have functionality to visible in Ukrainian to at least help them navigate to the you know the records they're trying to see there and we get that here uh, you know, we can switch this over to Ukrainian, which gives us the ability to demonstrate all these different navigational elements, titles, whatever, in Ukrainian here. And then we'll see, we can go here and see, uh, you know, all of the different pages and, and headings and everything in Ukrainian as well. Um, one of the things that we're going to plan to build out in the future is all of the different uh, form fields and view headers here being in Ukrainian as well they do support that but for right now they said this was able to quickly allow us to get a Ukrainian interface navigation system built in there and then we've also got other uh, some other nice out of the box features we were able to able to leverage like being able to you know create a new support case in case you know, somebody's having problems with the portal they can just uh, create a you know a support ticket uh, here how do I use the portal and potentially attach files whatever and submit a case and then what this will what this will do is create a case inside of the the system here that users internally can, will be able to see and also let the the person who created it uh, track that case right here from the portal itself as well so uh, yeah you can see here that uh, that yeah w what we've built out here is already in a state where it can meet a lot of the needs around uh, the drivers shelters warehouses and helping them to to be more organized with their communications and build a central repository for you know the information about what's out there you know shelters animals warehouses but we've also got a uh, a pretty robust roadmap for where we want to take this in the future so for one thing we've talked a little bit about shelters here how we've been able to track through comments some of the some of the sorts of communications there as far as uh, validating shelters uh, and requesting supplies, for, uh, driver communication, that kind of stuff. But we want to build out in the future some specific UI elements there that will allow for uh, you know, specifically creating supply requests and drivers who are logged, you know, by, by shelters and drivers who are logged in to go in and actually intercept those supply requests and say, hey, I'm going to deliver at, you know, this portion of the supply request uh, here. You know, they want 3,000 microchips. Some driver's going to go ahead and bring them, uh, you know, 1,500 here. And those uh, requests and deliveries will be visible right here on the portal. Um, we're also going to continue to expand the functionality here around uh, animals in the future. So you know, right now, you know, we've started importing a lot of these these animals that we've scanned in from from microchips, the ones that have been uh, you know, picked up, sterilized, vaccinated, and received those microchips. We want to create the, the largest Ukrainian database of dogs and cats especially there, though. We're hoping to invite other organizations and volunteers to add to it. Dan's also uh, discussed some ideas around you know, uh, integrating this into a uh, blockchain creating nfts of the animals for digital records uh, which could also potentially be used for fundraising there and then you know as i mentioned before too uh, the uh, one of the main purposes of this whole effort is to aid in the adoption and reunification of these animals and you know in that vein we're also looking at potential ways to add uh, or to integrate with other systems that allow for pet 
facial recognition in order to allow for you know a Ukrainian refugee that maybe lost their dog or cat to use a photo on their mo- mobile device uh, and potentially try and match it with uh, with a particular animal and give you know the the location of the photo you know and the date uh, in order to give them the best chance possible of being able to be reunified with that animal. One of the other key features that uh, is supported here is. Uh, is mobile functionality. You know, I've been showing you the demo here from my desktop, but this whole UI experience is fully supported on mobile devices as well, which is important since many of the drivers, volunteers, and even shelters don't have access to uh, laptops and desktops. So, so the entire application, both on on this side of it, the, the Dynamics 365 side and the portal side, are fully supported on mobile devices. Uh, you can see we've got a, a picture of of that here. So, yeah, I, I hope that's helpful to you know, get an idea of you know, some of the background behind the cause, some of the technology at play here, as well as uh, some of the future items on the roadmap here. If you have any questions, uh, please feel free to reach out and contact Dan Fine at danielfine at uwarf.onmicrosoft.com is shown on the screen here, uh, or the uh, phone number listed here as well, 1-206-227-8894. Again, my name is Nick Talsma, Technical Power Platform Solutions Architect, Ludia Consulting. Thanks for watching and listening.